What's up everybody, Gerald here and welcome back to yet another video of Chasing the 30 up here on Steve's Lake of Dan Fishing Complex. As you can see, I'm in my bivvy, so I'm doing the night. We're up in the haunted. Basically, by the time we've got everything up and set up and all the rods are out and we'd had our dinner, it was uh, too late for me to show you anything. So what I'm going to do, I'll come back in the morning and I'll show you where all the rods are, talk you through what baits we're using and where the rigs are. But you might see me in the night, fingers crossed we'll get a fish. If not, I'll see you in the morning and we'll have a good catch up. Then. Uh, I'd only be coming back if we caught one in the night. I don't know, I have a clue what the time is, but uh, I was just laying in the bivvy with the light on, just getting comfy. And what I think's the middle rod, it's either the middle or the right rod, one of the two, it's torn off. And we've got ourselves the first fish of the trip. Nothing massive, it's a nice little one, but for a change, it's a mirror. Let's get it up. Flat. A lovely little Steve's Lake mirror, probably maybe ten pound. It's definitely spawned out. I can feel it. It's all hollow underneath here. But yeah, let's get some pictures. We'll get this one back, and then we'll try and get the rods back out in the dark. Good morning. It's about eight o'clock. I've had a nice lay in. I've done a lap of the lake already this morning just to try and see if I can see any fish. No signs of anything at the minute, but the weather has drastically changed from yesterday. So when we got here, it was absolutely tipping it down. Now we were only meant to have light showers yesterday. It ended up raining for the whole day. Uh, the day before has been boiling hot. The day before that was boiling hot as well. So in typical fashion, exactly what's been happening every time I've tried to come fishing here, it's rained. So that's why you haven't seen any videos I've actually done maybe five or six sessions down here and it's rained constantly and very heavy for those sessions and it's really hard to make a video when it's raining. I've also not caught any fish so <laughs> it was a good start last night to actually get one um, to our 48 hours down here. Danny's with me, we're up in the haunted, I'm in the right hand side, he's in the left hand side as per normal. There were fish on the spot for him yesterday and there was fish on the spots for me. So we got the rods out. Like I said, we had our lovely Chinese last night. Oh, it's lovely. So we, uh, we uh, got the rods out, had our Chinese, got everything set up, and then by then it was too dark to show you anything. So I'll show you all them in a minute, but just going back to what I've been doing. Uh, like I said, I've done five sessions up here. One of the sessions was down the other end in the first two swims. Me and Dan did 24 hours. Uh, Dan had a 35 pound catfish, which I'll put a picture of up now. Um, well, Dan also did a session down in the very, very first swim on the other side, and he had a 22 pound 10 carp. And I've been up here basically just blanking in the rain, so joyful times. I've also been fishing on a couple of the other lakes. I did, um, I did a little short session on Club Pond, and we managed to catch a very special fish out there, the one that I've been trying to catch for a long time. We caught the, the ghost carp. What a lovely fish. It didn't weigh anywhere near as much as I thought it was going to weigh. And when you see it in the water, it looks quite big and it looks quite wide. I got it on the bank and it only weighed 14 pounds. So I'm not sure if it had spawned and um, lost a little bit of weight there. But it was a lovely fish. Really happy to get that first cast as well. I saw it in, saw it in the area. I just underarm cast it out onto this little spot in bunks and weed right up the other end. He went straight down on it and had it, so I was so happy about that. Hey guys, so this is going to be a short clip that I'm throwing into a random video. Uh, I've come down with my mum to do a couple of hours on Club Pond, and uh, we've gone and finally caught the one fish that we've been saying we want to catch out of here. We've got the ghost carp. It's not as big as I thought it was. 14 pound, one ounce. Um, I seem to catch a lot of 14 pounders, but what's a beautiful fish. Let's get it up. 
I'll show it to you. Oh, cracking 14 pound ghost carp from Darren Club Pond. Challenge completed, we've caught the target fish out of here. Happy days. I've also done a few sessions just basically roaming the complex and the other night I managed to pull out five fish from four different lakes so that's a good start to possibly what would be the 24 hour challenge so if I could start like that and get five fish in two hours from four different lakes I'd be very very happy so I went up and actually managed to get two carp out of basils can't believe it that lake has been absolutely destroying me Hence why you haven't seen a video on it, because it's just been so tough up there for me. I've seen other people catching around me, again, exactly the same what's been going on here. But, I just haven't been able to hook one. But I went up there, it was still quite warm. It was just it was getting into the evening, about 5 o'clock, and I could see them all patrolling around on that back shelf. Cast it out there, had a nice fish, probably of about 20 pounds. And then I had another one that was probably about 14, 15. So, two nice fish out there. I then popped down onto Terrapin and had a nice little, probably about 12 pounder out of there. I then went to, where did I go after that, Willow and had a lovely little little round common from there. And what was it, a mirror? I remember being quite round. I'll put a picture in now anyway, and you'll see. That was probably only about five or six pounds. And then I finished off on the club like I normally do and had another nice little one out of there as well. So that was a good evening's fishing. But apart from that, I've just been working. Working hard and it's just hard to get out at the minute, um, mainly because I've been lazy and it's been raining. To be fair, I don't really want to come in the rain. But it's nice to be out in the bivvy, doing a good few sessions, spending some time with me mate, doing a bit of fishing. It's good for the old mental health and everything and getting yourself out on the bank and just taking care of yourself. Spend some time with some people. But yeah, I've been doing a lot of walking, so I've met quite a lot of you now that are all my subs. So to all my subs who I've met and spoke to, it's nice to meet you all. And uh, I'm glad you're all enjoying the videos. And uh, if you need anything, or if you want to know anything, don't be afraid to ask. I know a few of you are a bit, not afraid to ask, but feel like you're poaching my spots and bits and bobs like that. But I really don't mind, if I'm being honest. I, I just want to see people catch fish. So if you want to know some spots or how I do it and how I catch my fish just ask I don't, I'll share the information I don't mind but yeah so we've got another we've got another day a night and a day to see if we can catch a 30 now there's two other people on this lake now let me just backtrack a little bit this lake has been fishing really well apart from for me so Rich has been up here since the last video I think he's had five fish up to I think 26 pounds um, Gary, who we just met the other week, had a 30 down at that middle one. And then he was in here yesterday before we got here. He had a couple. 22 pound mirror. Is it 22? Yeah, 22 pound mirror and then a couple of little ones. And he got snapped off on a pike. There is a massive pike in Dan's swim right now. A massive pike. I wish I had me, uh, me lure rod or something. I'll go try and catch it. But yeah, so he's had a good few fish. Now there's two other people on the lake. And this morning, they've had a 33 pound common. Everyone's catching 30s apart from me and Dan. Well, I say that, Dan's had a 30, so it's just me. And they had a 56 pound catfish. So, cool, they've had a good they've had a good start to their session. They're here as well till tomorrow night. So there's only four of us on the lake, and it's the weekend, I can't believe it. I think the rain yesterday scared everyone off. Now, it's meant to be boiling hot again today. The sun is trying to come out. It was a bit like this the other day and then it ended up being the hottest day in the week. It's still very cloudy but the sun is trying to come through, it's early so come midday I think it's going to be nice and warm again. The fish might be up in the layers having a little bit of a mooch around. So I'm in the in the spots where I normally go which I'll show you just in a minute. Um, but yeah that fish actually fell on the right hand rod to a cell bottom bait. There was nothing tipped on it or anything like that, it's just a plain old cell bottom bait on a normal standard hair rig with a little bit of shrink tube just to give the hook a good kick and it absolutely nailed it, it was a banging hook hold, it's just a shame it wiped out all three rods I've actually got to probably redo all my rods in a couple of hours, I did try and drive it out with a bait boat in the dark and I think I've got them in the spots but I'm not too sure so I'm going to give it probably to about 11, 12, let the sun come up, let the bite time go 
and then reposition my rods and then they are not moving unless I catch a fish. I will get them dead on the spot with the boat, get them in there and then just leave them, which I think is important on this lake. I think a lot of people come here and treat it like it's a runs water and just constantly casting, constantly rebaiting. I'm only putting in 10 freebies around each one because I'm just trying to catch a fish. I've stopped piling in the bait. I, there was a point where I started trying to put in a lot of bait just to try and see if I could draw the fish in to spots. But I've come to realise, I think, they don't really turn onto a massive pile of bait. I think you've just got to find the patrol points. So up and down the margins, there's been a couple that have come off the island. Now I normally never fish the island, and I don't think I'm going to fish the island today to be fair because I've got three really nice spots on my, on my margin that I can fish on the, on the bank. But yeah, I think just putting a little bit of bait in and try and get them on when they're patrolling up and down and through the margin, especially as they have spawned, I think is the way to go. I don't think piling in the bait at the minute is going to work. I've also been putting a little bit of salt on my bait because obviously they've spawned and carp crave salt after spawning. So I've just put a little bit, not loads, because I don't want to put too much in. It's not healthy for anybody. Salt's not good for anything other than attracting the fish, obviously. So I managed to have one last night. So that came on a cell that had a little bit of salt on it. I've actually got to go and get some salt because I've had to open a new bag of cell and I didn't bring the salt with me. So maybe I'll text my mum so she'll drop it down to me. That'd be nice if she sees this. Thanks, mum, if you do it. If you don't, never mind. It's not the end of the world. But yeah, so happy days. This is a long old clip, nearly nine minutes. But yeah, basically that's what's been going on. Been doing a little bit of fishing off camera and just spending some time and doing sessions and just enjoying them rather than doing a lot of filming. And the rain really hasn't helped, otherwise you would see would have seen more videos. But yeah, so we got a day and a night and another day. Hopefully we're gonna get another one. Fingers crossed, it, like I say, it's been fishing really well. I'm hoping Dan gets one. Um, he deserves one. But he's got some lovely spots over in that swim. So I'll quickly get out of the bivy now and I'll show you where all the rods are. So like I said, we are in the right hand side of the Haunted Swim, which is right up the opposite end, for anyone that doesn't know from when you come in. Okay, the right hand rod is, that was Dan's rod that just went, little bleep, is over there, just under that tree. Middle rod, so the right hand rod's got the cell bottom bait now, so that's just under there. Middle rod has got a cell bottom bait which is topped with a spicy pepperoni boilie just to get it to sit like a snowman which is under that tree and then the left hand rod is right down under that tree and what is on that one that's a pepperoni bottom bait with a pink bit of corn on it now I'm probably gonna move that rod because actually just past that tree there's a set of brushes and I've seen fish patrolling up and down there before, so I thought from here it looked like that tree was quite dense. And when you get round there, it's not at all. So I drove the bait under there, and like I said, it was getting quite late last night when I got the rods out. And after having that fish, I didn't really have time to mess around. So I, I knew I could get it under there, and at least it would be fishing. So I've just popped it under there during the night, I'm not had anything on it. So I'm thinking about moving it. I may, I may even move it to the island. I'm not sure. I mean, three rods along that bank might be a bit too much, so we might put the left hand rod off that island in a couple of hours once the sun's up and the fish are less likely to bite. So, let me show you where Dan's fishing. He's got his three rods out. Now, he's got one rod on the dinner plate, which is under there. If you know the dinner plate, you know the dinner plate. I think. That was the middle rod. The left hand rod I'm pretty sure is under there. And then the right hand rod is right over by the bridge over there. He's got two bits of popped up sweet corn on there. A load of sweet corn on the bottom. And then he's probably got snowman rigs on the others. I can't remember. But yeah, he says he has. He's got snowman rigs on the others. What bait's on there? Uh, Cell. Link. Oh, the link. He's got the link snowman rigs on them too. But yeah, there's been fish patrolling up and down there. We've seen a couple this morning as well. So it all looks good for a bite. So this is Dan's middle rod spot. Oh no. Gerald, I mean a chunk up. Oh mate. Look, look at all the bubbles where he's been eating my sweet corn, man. 
Oh no. But they've been ploughing through that. That was a fat pile of it. <laughs> oh no. He might come back if we leave it alone. Can you imagine that Yeah, I know, I can see. Oh my days, I'm leaving that rod here. <laughs> right, as I was saying before Dan spooked off, what he believes to be an absolute chunk on his third rod spot, which I'll show you in just a sec. Basically, this is what we call the dinner plate. Now, it's been completely cleared out by carp. When we first started fishing here, this was all silt. We've been putting in the bait, and they've been coming over here and just cleared it. We had a little tiny clear patch here, but now, this whole section and what normally happens is the carp will sit right under this stump to get it in here you've got to have a boat though you cannot cast in here and I do not advise trying to cast in here once it's in here it's not too bad there are a couple of snags but if you're on your rods quick you can get them out but that is the dinner plate just look at it it's clear and if you present a bait on it lovely so this is where Dan's third rod was now unfortunately when he brought his boat in last night he accidentally brought it too far in and dropped a ton of sweet corn right on the bank and that's where he's just spooked the fish from. His actual rod, his line is a little bit further out, out past here. So he has spooked a nice fish off of that spot there and look how shallow it is there. It's probably two foot at most. I actually thought that there was no chance of it getting in there but that says there was a fish there and when I came over it was all cloudy so hopefully that fish will come back and maybe feed on the deep water out there I want to pick out some of the silk boilies out there So just really quickly, while we've got one of the rods in, I thought I'd show you the rig. It's just a very simple hair rig that I normally use. We've got the 25 pound Camo Tech soft, and I've just stripped the braid down there just to make it a little bit more supple at the eye of the hook. And then I've used some shrink tubing just to give that a really nice angle, which helps with the hooking properties. That goes up to an anti-tangle sleeve. A three ounce lead, I use quite a heavy lead in here, and that's just on a simple lead clip with a little bit of tubing up the line. So it's just gone 10 o'clock and I've redone all three rods. They're all back on the spots apart from the left hand rod which is now right out down just off those rushes on the island there. And I've already had a couple of little liners on there so and I'm back leading so there must be fish in the area over there. I've put about 10 to 15 freebies around each one. Right hand rod's back under this tree, middle rod's back under that tree over there. There has been a little bit of movement also just down in this bay just off the stump over there so I've put in a few freebies over there for later on when the sun comes up and it's hitting the water over here I might stick one under there and just see if they're following the sun the water is actually quite warm I'm surprised because it rained all last night and uh, I thought it would have chilled it down but the water is actually quite nice um, so maybe the fish are on the moving on the feed and they I think they have definitely spawned like I say that fish last night felt quite hollow it felt like it had spawned out and there's so much fry in the lake at the minute but the lake today just looks absolutely beautiful breakfast is served straight from the old little uh, food shack down the bottom sausage and bacon baguette I'll let you know if it's any good so it's two o'clock we were just sitting here minding our own business watching Carl and Alex and the right hand rod on my side has gone off I bit into it and instantly I've seen it's stuck in a snag under the tree. Uh, there's a branch that come up out of the water and into the tree unfortunately. We saw the fish, it was only a little common, probably about six to eight pound maybe. Um, as we were trying to free it, it has come off unfortunately, but at least the fish are in the area and I'm getting bites, so I've put it straight back out there. Dan's just tying himself a rig, he's tying himself a zig rig because he's seen a fish just like cruising around right by the island and we've just chucked the marker rod out there. It's about two and a half foot deep, so he's going to try two foot, a two foot zig and just see if he can get one off there. Um, but yeah, so the fish are on the move. It's got a lot warmer now all of a sudden. It's starting to get quite warm and quite hot. So maybe they'll get on the move and get on the feed. All right, so I got a little bit bored and thought I'd do a, a spot of pike fishing. I've cast out towards the island, 
and I thought it was going to go on the island but I thought oh no I'll leave it and the lure landed in the water and instantly this fish here has taken it we've got ourselves a lovely pike I'm not going to weigh it but I'm going to say it's probably 10 12 pounds it's got quite a belly on it it's quite full he's already given me a nip once so I'm just going to get some photos and get it back So, what's the time? 20 past 4. <laughs> so it's 20 past 4 and the left hand rod, which is the one that I moved and put right down the island by the rushes, has just torn off. We've gone and got ourselves another fish. It's only another little one, but they all count. A nice little common. Let's get it up. Ooh. It's probably about eight pound, this one. It's only one of the little ones. Hopefully some of the bigger ones will come along next and we'll have something nice to show you. Let's take a few pictures and get it back. So, uh, fourth fish of the trip, just was uh, doing another little bit of pike fishing on the third rod while I was bored and I've gone and caught myself another little jack pike, this one is tiny, came straight in, um, doing quite well today, good session, so uh, let's get a picture, get it back as always. So it's dinner time, we just uh, chucked all the leftover Chinese into the wok giving it a good bit of stir fry going on here it's going to be tasty I'll let you know how it goes by the way that baguette that we had this morning was banging but this is going to be even better so it's coming up for nine o'clock at night we've had our dinner and it was absolutely lovely we're just going to get our rods out ready for the night Dan's done a little bit of marking around over on that far bank and I don't know if you can see it but there is there it is, there's a little marker photo over there. He's found himself a nice clear little six foot spot that's close to the edge. It just drops off over there from four down to six and then to seven a little bit further out. But he's going to put it on the six foot over there for the night and see what happens. He's just driving the boat over there, going to drop it right next to it. I should feel for a nice donk any second. There you go, down it goes. Felt good as it went down. And now he's going to drive the boat back and we're going to scatter a few free bees around it. So it's now 10 o'clock, all the rods are out, all back on the spot, so I've put about 15 free bees around each one, apart from the uh, island rod, which has got unlucky for some number 13. Dan's got all his rods out as well, so now we're just going to sit back, relax, and hope for a bite in the night. If not, we've still got all the day tomorrow as well to see if we can catch another one. There's a few fish on the move down the bottom in the snag where all the big fish normally sit, but we did see the Zed fish what we believe was said fish anyway um, on my right hand rod spot so they are about so fingers crossed for the night if you don't see me in the night then I'll see you in the morning oh, so it's 1.30 in the morning I don't know if you can hear me I'm whispering because I'm not waking down up but the right hand rod's gone again the one that's under the tree the nearest tree gone get ourselves another fish um, it's another common it's not another big one but they all count, so that's three carp landed, one lost, and two pike for this 48 hour session. It's a nutty little fish, this one. Give me a right good scrap. It's all tensed. Okay. A lovely little Steve's common. Let's get some photos and get it back. So I've just slipped the fish back, um, another nice little one. Now I'm not going to wake up down and say can I borrow your bait boat mate just to put out the right hand rods and we'll leave that one out. But I'm going to walk around there quickly and put a bit more bait in on the spot so that when I wake up in the morning they've had a good few hours to get in there without any lines being in the water. And hopefully that might help get us a bite tomorrow daytime. So I'm going to go put the bait in then we'll get myself back to sleep and I'll see you in the morning if I don't have another one. Morning, it's 8.20 and it's all been quiet for the rest of the night, especially for poor old Dan over here on the left hand side of the haunted. The dinner plate's been completely cleared of all his sweet corn, but his hook bait's still sitting there. So, the fish have been getting in over there, I mean there could be smaller fish, but I can't see them eating that amount of sweet corn. I mean he's putting like 4 key 
uh, over there and it's all disappearing and he did see a carp yesterday as you saw in the video when you see this boots one feeding on it over there so I think there have been fish in the area I think he's just been very unlucky for him to not take his hook bait my side is looking nice and good for a bite that right hand rod which is right under the tree has been doing me all the fish I've just had a bleep now look which is right in under that tree over there now normally the middle rod which is that spot there does the fish but I've not seen anything under there today or the whole 48 hours really but we did see the Z fish we think was the Z fish moved up and to slowly come down this bank last night so I felt good for a fish and lo and behold at 1.30 this morning I've gone and had that nutty little common so not a bad session for me really four carp hooked three landed and two pike We've got the rest of the day, hoping for one that's slightly bigger, but I'll take anything we can get, and I'm hoping Dan gets one, because I think he's getting a bit frustrated. So it's now one o'clock, and uh, Dan had a run a little while ago, but we lost it, unfortunately. No other signs of any fish. The gentleman over on the other bank, they didn't have anything in the night, so they just had the 33 pound common yesterday on the uh, catfish. So a couple more hours probably, and we're gonna get ourselves packed away and get ourselves off home. So we've still got a little while. Hopefully something comes along and takes the bait. So it's 2.30 and we've decided to have a little move. We had a little mooch around up the top and we didn't see any fish, nothing was going on. So we've come right down the other end we're in the very first bay, Dan's fishing two rods down here. There's been no one in here all weekend. I'm in the swim next door. Let me just show you where my rods are. I have got three rods out. They're all very close to be fair. Let's just do that. I have got one right in the middle of the channel, one off the edge of the island, and then one just about three foot off the island over here it's got about 10 freebies around each one we're hoping the fish might have moved down here and followed the wind because it's pushed all the natural bait down here as you see there's a lot of scum on the surface where the wind's been blowing down here but that will also push a lot of the natural food down here Dan's got two rods out one just under the tree over there and then one up against the rushes over there the normal spots Right, so uh, we'd made the move and the left hand rod, which was about three foot off the island, the middle of the island, was the one I was least confident in. And that's the one that's torn off. And we've gone and got ourselves a 15 pound, 12 ounce mirror. If I can get it up, it's quite lively. Lovely fish, look at this. Up until now, I haven't really caught very many mirrors out of here and I've had uh, two in this session, so that makes me happy. What a lovely fish. Hopefully we've got time for one more. Hopefully Dan can get the next one. Let's get a few photos of this one. We'll get it back and get the rods back out. I've got no idea what the time is, but the rod's only been back out 10 minutes on the spot. And we've gone and caught ourselves a lovely 19 and a half pound common carp from the new swim. The move has paid off. What a session we're having. He's uh, very lively still. As you can see, come here. Obviously, before spawn, this fish would have probably been a little bit bigger, but we'll take it anyway. What a lovely fish. Let's get it up. It's quite long. Woo. There he is, 19 pound, 19 and a half pound even, of common carp. Let's get some photos and get it back. So it's now six o'clock and as you can see the rods are all packed away we're ready to go home it's been a great session for me but unfortunately for danny didn't manage to get one but he'll be back he always does and then he'll always catch one eventually so we're going to keep persevering we're going to get that 30. a couple of nice fish after the move so the move really did pay off so it just shows you if you're not on the fish moving you'll find them but i am off now so until next time tight lines wet nets and i'll see you all soon